Hello everyone, I hope you are all well wherever you are. And in this video, interesting topic, the, an introduction to the four velocity and four momentum of a photon. Um, now in both special relativity and general relativity, the concepts of four velocity and four momentum play crucial roles in describing the motion and dynamics of particles. So for a massive particle, these quantities are straightforward to define. So particles of masses. It's simple, they're, they're well defined. However, photons being massless require particles require a more subtle treatment. And that's going to be the subject of this video and the one that follows it. So let's make a start, remove that. Okay, so in special relativity, the space time is flat, Minkowski space, and all objects move in this flat geometry. Photons are massless particles, travel at the speed of light. Um, for velocity for massive particles, let's just go over that quickly again. So for a massive particle for velocity, u uh, contravariant mu, index mu, is defined as the contravariant components are dx mu d tau, where tau is the proper time along the world line of the particle, and x mu are the time coordinates of the particle. So you can imagine this particle, spaceship, an individual, whatever the object is, imagine it carrying its own wristwatch, and the wristwatch will be recording the proper time. All right, you can imagine the heartbeat of a person, whatever it is you want, but it's it's time that's carried with, time measured from the perspective of the object itself as it moves along its world line. Since photons travel at the speed of light, there is no reference frame in which they are at rest. So there's no wristwatch. And hence proper time tau cannot be defined for them in the same way as for massive particles. As a result, the four velocity is not defined for photons in the conventional sense used for massive particles. So here's a little bit of a quandary there. All right, so instead the photon's four momentum plays the role that the four velocity does for massive particles. And that'll be the subject of this video and the next. So for a photon, which is a massless particle, the proper time tau along its world line is not defined because a photon always moves at the speed of light. Instead of the four velocity, we use the four momentum, p contravariant index mu, to describe the, uh, or contravariant coordinates, to describe the motion of a photon. p mu is dx mu d lambda, where lambda is an affine parameter along the photon's path, and x mu of lambda represents the space-time position of the photon. So you can parameterize the path of the photon in terms of the affine parameter lambda. The four momentum satisfies the null condition, p mu, uh, this condition here is zero, indicating the photon moves along a null light-like path. Now we can't parameterize the uh, path of these particles using proper time since the tau is zero between any two events, but there are other parameters that we can use. So you can imagine in some arbitrary inertial frame, we can describe the path of a light ray traveling along the x-axis to be x equals ct. A plot of ct versus x shows you this diagonal line here. So the world line of this light ray is described by x mu is ct xyz, which is ct ct 0, 0. So just motion along the x-axis here. All right. Um, so here y and z is 0 where the parameter we are using is lambda equals ct. c is the speed of light and t is coordinate time. We can write this parametrically in the form x mu is u mu lambda, all right? where u mu equals 1, 1, 0, 0, and x dot mu, if you look at this, x, the differentiate this with respect to the parameter lambda, you're just going to be left with u mu here. Okay, now the next video is given over to how this comes about. I'm going to, in that video, so please do watch it after this one, that is the one that's going to look into this in some detail and show how this comes about and, and its more general form as well. All right, so that's the focus of the next video. I'm just going over some ground here, uh, some generalities about um, photon four velocity. All right, so let's move on. All right, so the tangent four vector to this world line, u, the vector u, is x dot mu e mu. I'm just writing this out in full basis form. Most of the time for this video and the next one, I'm just going to concentrate on the components, these, these here. But in its full form, here's the vector here. If, if such a thing 
which is difficult to define, but we're going to define through the photons for momentum. So this object here. Okay, as always, you'll have to imagine the time axis. This is a null vector, this one, since u dot u is eta mu nu, the Minkowski metric, uh, x dot mu, x dot nu, okay, which is the same as eta mu nu, u mu, u nu. And expanding this because we only have motion along the x-axis here and nothing in the y or z direction, okay? So here's this, uh, its fall velocity must be tangent to its world line. So it would look like this. Okay, that's what I'm trying to show here. Uh, now, if we find the magnitude squared of this, well, a to 0, 0, u0, zero, u0, zero, plus a to 1, 1, u1, one, u1, one, and we get, uh, this is negative 1, so negative 1 times, these are 1 times 1 is 1, plus this is 1 plus 1, and 1 times 1, and minus 1 plus 1, 0. So we can see it's a null vector, as it should be. For photons, it should be, and for massless particles, it should be. All right, so tangent vector, the photons path. The key point here is that the photons form momentum vector, P mu, is parallel to the tangent vector. So if you can imagine, um, the form momentum is parallel to the fall velocity. You'd expect that, wouldn't you? Okay, for both particles with mass and particles without mass. Okay, uh, so it is parallel to the tangent vector u mu of the null geodesic along which the photon moves. The form momentum pu points in the same direction as the tangent vector of the photon's world line. So the world line is a null curve and the equation of motion for the photons is given by du, uh, the vector u, the form velocity, d lambda differentiated with respect to lambda is zero. Okay, this is a vector equation and since vectors are tensors, then we know that this equation holds true in all coordinate systems. Okay, now, just a short note about coordinates. Um, we are free to rescale coordinates as necessary. So take the radial coordinate R and multiply it by uh, some scalar factor alpha to produce a new radial coordinate R bar. It's alpha times R. We still have a radial coordinate. Um, we can still differentiate this radial coordinate in the usual way. So dr bar d lambda is alpha times dr d lambda. And we can represent the form momentum of photon by rescaling the null vector found in the previous slide, well, what we took to be the fall velocity, using some scalar alpha. So we get the form momentum is alpha times u. We know that both the fall velocity u and the form momentum p point in the same direction. They're just multiples of each other they're parallel to each other and so there's some factor uh, a multiplication factor which relates them so alpha is x dot mu e mu writing it out in component and basis form this is also a null vector since p dot p is alpha u dot alpha u is alpha squared scalar squared u dot u well u dot u is zero so alpha squared non-zero times this zero object here is zero and p dot p is alpha squared eta mu nu, this is equal to zero. So however you want to do it, um, both are zero. So they're both null vectors, the form momentum and the fall velocity. Now we can choose this scalar alpha such that the components of this form momentum vector in some arbitrary inertial frame are p mu is e zero. And see this is, so this is um, in standard configuration going along no momentum in the y or z directions, and so it's just motion along parallel to the x-axis. Okay, well, magnitude squared is minus e squared on, in, with the Minkowski metric is e on c all squared plus p squared is equal zero, implies that e equals p times c, as we know for a photon. All right, now, form momentum in curved space-time. Now, in curved space-time, the form momentum of a photon is still a well-defined concept, but it must be generalized to account for the fact that space-time is no longer flat. So we can't use the Minkowski metric here. The form momentum of photon is still given by this object, but in general relativity, the components of the form momentum transform according to the local geometry of space-time described by the metric tensor G mu nu. The norm of the form momentum still satisfies this. Okay, it's still a null geodesic, which reflects the fact that the photon moves on a null geodesic in curved space-time. All right, so the tangent vector to this world line is this one here. Okay, so you can imagine the fall velocity, uh, which is not well defined, which is why we're trying to rewrite it in terms of the fall momentum. 
and that is most definitely will be the focus of the next video. This is just some background material. So here's our four velocity as we imagine it, this form here. Okay, here's our tangent vector. And of course the full momentum would be parallel to this. It may be larger, it may be smaller, but certainly parallel to it. Now, imagine the time axis, of course. I can't really show that explicitly. That sort of diagram anyway. All right, so the, this, uh, the magnitude squared of the full momentum zero remains valid in general relativity, but the metric accounts for the curvature of space time. Since the full momentum is essentially the generalized velocity, and that's really what I'm trying to get across in this first video. It's the full momentum is really a generalized, so to speak, velocity for a photon. It plays the role that the full velocity u mu plays for a massive particle. The photon's trajectory is determined by the equation for a null geodesic, where gamma, mu, alpha, beta are the Christoffel symbols um, of the second kind, which account for the space-time curvature and general relativity. So in summary, full velocity is not well defined for a photon because there's no proper time. Okay, but we can get around it by using the full momentum to take its place. So instead, the, the photon's full momentum, P mu, is used, which is parallel to the tangent vector of the photon's path, the null geodesic, just as the full velocity is. The full momentum is null, satisfying this condition and describes the photon's energy and direction of motion. So while we don't use full velocity for photons, their full momentum does point along the tangent to their path and serves a similar role. Okay, now in the next video, I'm going to drill down to the form that the full velocity takes using the full momentum to give us that structure. And you'll see that um, that then clears up the picture. I'm just setting it. The scene for this video is setting the scene by showing that four velocity is for a photon or massless particle is not well defined. So we use the four momentum as a generalized velocity, but we can drill down further and come up with a form for the four velocity for a, a massless particle such as a photon using the four momentum. And that's that is the focus of the next video. All right. So um, I hope that's been useful to you, this video here. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, wherever you are, I wish you well. Um, if you will, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. And uh, I'll see you uh, in the next video. So thank you, everyone. Um, take care and uh, see you next time. All right. Bye.